There's some little bit of confusion of how that circuit on that uh, Akai uh, tape deck controls the speed of the AC motor. I thought a little deeper dive and a little explanation of the theory and a simplified diagram might help you guys wrap your head around it. So this is just kind of a simplified uh, view of how that servo circuit works. In a conventional AC motor, induction motor, you've got two coils in the motor, and you've got your line in your neutral and a capacitor. And basically the the AC signal, now this could be on the line side either, it doesn't matter, I just drew it on the neutral side, but it really doesn't matter. Because the job of the capacitor is to create a delay. So that your, your AC signal coming in gets delayed by approximately 90 degrees by the capacitor. So if, you, if this is your AC signal here, your AC signal will be delayed on the leg on the capacitor by about 90 degrees. What that causes, that, that causes the, the phase to be out of, between the two coils so that it creates a rotating magnetic field between the two coils which causes the motor to spin. That's how an induction motor works. This is a conventional induction motor like you'd find on any AC operated fan with an induction motor. Not a squirrel cage, that's a little different. A squirrel cage motor does not use a capacitor and it only uses one coil. And it's just the way that the, the actual uh, stator is set up with relationship to the rotor that it, it creates its own uh, rotating magnetic field by the, the copper bars that are part of the stator which basically forms part of, it forms a transformer it creates its own induction which creates that that out of phase field for a squirrel cage motor we can maybe go over that in another time but this is a conventional induction motor you got two coils capacitor and um, capacitor causes a phase shift on one of the coils which creates the rotating magnetic field now we move over to this servo circuit. This servo circuit is very, very similar, but you've got a couple more components, and I've tried to simplify things because looking at this for that Akai is very complex. Basically, I've redrawn this entire schematic minus the direction change switching because that with these snubbers, that's what these are. These are snubbers to stop sparks when the relay changes uh, polarity. Uh, we don't need to see all that stuff. What we want to understand is how this control logic works and how it works and it's actually quite simple. So the transformer itself first of all is not connected to the line so that's actually a mistake because the line is over here and this is neutral. It's connected through the main power transformer. There's a separate winding on the transformer for the motor. That one there. So here's our winding for the motor. It works exactly the same. You've still got your two coils on the motor and you've got your capacitor which creates your phase shift. But here's where the differences are. There's a full wave bridge rectifier that's added in the control. Now, on the schematic, these are drawn to ground. But if you look at the transformer, the motor itself is completely isolated. It is no way connected to ground, right? It's not. So this could be taken out. This is actually connected like this. Okay, now you see what's happening. The transistor, the full wave bridge, we, we aren't needing to rectify anything here. We don't need a DC voltage. We just need an AC voltage. We just need to change the amount of current that's allowed to flow through the motor so the motor can speed up or slow down. Uh, the more current, the faster the motor is going to spin. The less current, the slower the motor is going to spin. We do produce a DC voltage on here, of course, because we are going through a full wave bridge rectifier. So this would become the negative side and this would become the positive side. But all we are in effect doing is we are using this transistor like a variable resistor. I could take the transistor out and put in a variable resistor here, right? And that would do the same thing. All we're using this as, this is from our control circuit from our servo. And all we are doing is we are raising and lowering the current that's allowed to flow through this bridge rectifier. Think of this as not even existing. Think of this just being a variable resistor across here. It would do the same thing. You need a wire wound one, of course, where you could turn it up and turn it down, but a wire wound variable resistor in series here. If we were to take the other motor and put our wire wound variable resistor here in place of this into there, right? Or into there, I guess that's how you draw it in. Uh, that would do the same thing. So basically what's happening here is the full wave bridge is rectifying, but it's it's rectifying the AC after it's already passed through the transform or the motor. Sorry, the motor is only seeing AC. What this is doing is this is just rectifying it, 
and the transistor is acting like a variable resistor. So as the transistor comes into conduction, as it as it the resistance declines, you're now allowing the current to flow through this bridge and basically allow it to pass more current through here by means of the transistor to return into the transformer. So the fact that these are grounded is just because that was, I guess, they, they wanted to ground it so that the transformer wasn't floating at a high voltage. It was referenced to ground. So that's the only reason why this is grounded. It's grounded to the chassis, which is actually grounded off of another winding off the transformer. But it's this is all isolated from the line anyway because you got a main power transformer. So they grounded it here. That adds some confusion to people. And um, also that transistor, because that because it was ground reference when that insulator shorted, it was allowing the collector to basically pass some current through to the ground, which was also connected to the emitter through this little one ohm resistor that's here. That's just a current limiting resistor. Anyway, if we eliminate this, then what we've got here is we've got current going through the trans going through the motor, both windings, comes through here goes in through the bridge rectifier back through here through the transistor which completes the circuit back through the other diode here just like that and that is basically how this thing works it's really quite simple uh, when you want to slow the motor down you actually turn off the transistor which will allow the voltage on this side to go up because we're increasing the resistance which in that in effect causes the current to go down and when the current goes down the motor speed slows down we want to increase the speed of the motor we just turn the transistor on harder when the transistor turns on more current is going to pass through this circuit which is going to go around like this and complete the circuit and because it's AC we're dealing with two sets one cycle of the waveform is going to go around this way the other cycle of the waveform is going to go the other way anyway that's basically how this 50 year old circuit servo circuit works when you break it down and look at it this way I think you'll find it's much easier to understand than trying to look at it from this perspective which even though there's errors in this part of the circuit this part here is exactly the same it's actually not that difficult to understand once you break it down and look at it in a, a simplistic view and that's as but that's a little simpler I think to understand how this works anyway not a very complicated circuit but now you understand why the, the motor speed was creeping up it wasn't that the transistor was shorted there was just some leakage think of it like a resistor between the emitter and collector because the emitter was in effect grounded so there was some leakage happening there which was allowing not a lot not enough current to really crank the motor up if it is shorted if it had shorted right through that insulator this motor would have run at full speed and it wouldn't have slowed down when you put it in play the thing would have screamed and the same as if the transistor were to short, it would go into full speed. But because of the way it was leakage, it was it was behaving as it was. I hope that uh, simplifies the uh, operation of this circuit. It seems complex, but actually when you break it down, it's fairly simple. Thanks for watching.